Welcome to stage 12 of the Giro d'Italia for the first individual time trial. It's a fairly hilly course, about 40 kilometers in length, and so far the best time is held by Emil Meyer at the finish line. As we see Egon Kallas come up to the first time check, and he's got the third best time at the one third point in the course. We'll show the top 10 riders in GC up on the screen because the top riders are very close together with the first three separated by just five seconds. So this is a big stage to establish some time gaps between them. And he believed Tuta, who's not far away from the race lead, has a great opportunity to take the pink jersey. Evgeny Balashkov, one of the leaders of AlphaTauri, has just gone through the first time check. And here comes Kelvin Moore, the GC leader for Natalia, who so far has had to contend with his teammate Josephine Udebaya for leadership of the team. And his initial time is not a good one. He's a minute 36 down on ML Meyer, and his teammate Udebaya is a lot quicker. She came in fourth, just 11 seconds behind Meyer at the first check. So Udebaya is on great form today, and should be poised to preserve her place inside the top 10. It's been a real revelation in the Jira by winning a stage and now leading the mountains competition and is also the highest place rider on her team. So we'll see if she can keep it up in the mountains in the last week of the race as Kelvin Moore needs to find some good legs if he's going to ascend the competition. And meanwhile, he believed Tutin of Kyoto has just put the best time at the first check, 19 seconds ahead of Emil Meyer and that is a real beating. So Two-Tone looks destined to win the stage today, unless he's overcooked himself on the first part of the course. And here is Carlos Nello, the little Colombian climber and the leader of the Sismic team. He's had quite a good Giro so far, but a bit quiet in terms of being right at the top of the leaderboard. And Ling Shen, in third place overall, he's put forth a good time so far as well. Manuel Navarro, not renowned as a great time trialist, needs to put in a tremendous ride today to stay in contention for the Giro. And he's doing so, 22nd place, that's pretty good. And what about his compatriot Luis Sancho, the current Malia Rosa, who's looked like the best climber in the race so far. Although he looks to be going pretty slow here, and this is a horrific time for Luis Sancho, two and a half minutes down already. Still a long way for him to ride, and that could end up doubling by the time we get to the finish. Second time check here, this is Hippolyte Tutin, who's just gone through it, once again with the best time. So he's done well on the downhill part of the course. He's got those two little climbs between himself and the finish. Now here comes Chung Ling Shen, he's catching Carlos Nello, they started two minutes apart on the course. So Ling Shin's on a great day today, once again inside the top 10 in the leaderboards at the time checks. So this is a big day for Chung Ling Shin, he is gaining on Manuel Navarro and Luis Sancho. He's also gaining on Jean-Marie Caillou, who's a very dangerous French climber. One of those riders where as the race goes on, he seems to get stronger and stronger. So it's important to gain time on him at this point in the race. And Luis Sancho needs to stop losing time out on the course. He was so far down at the first chime check. 70th place out of 96 riders. And we'll see how much worse it gets here. He's only bled about 30 more seconds, so he stopped the bleeding a little bit. The last part of the course is quite hard. Here comes Uday Baya, who's looked outstanding on the course today. She'll keep her place as the highest placed rider on her team. And that's Kelvin Moore, who she's caught for two minutes out on the course, so a disaster day for the American rider. Although Uday Baya is starting to fade on this last uphill to the finish. So Kelvin Moore, a stronger finish, preserving some dignity. But he definitely needs better days in the mountains. Uday Baya slips a little bit towards the end, 10th place at the finish. And you see Yannick Verhova actually has the best time at the finish line, so Emma Meyer really crack on these final climbs. This is Ileana Pavlova, the leader of the Doimo team. Quietly sitting in 7th place overall. She's lost 3 minutes at the finish. 
and Caillou has just finished in a great time 6th place so he's really made gains in the last part of the course. And then Two Tom we just saw has blown past everybody, 20 seconds faster than his teammate Yannick Verhova, and a further minute ahead of everybody else. So it looks like he believes Tutan is going to be the next leader of the Giro d'Italia, but by how much? Because three very dangerous climbers have yet to finish, and those are probably his biggest threats to winning the Giro overall. Ling Shen coming up to the finish line now. Sixth place, very good time for Chung Ling Shen, he'll be pleased with that. Just 1 minute 25 seconds behind Tutan. Carlos Nell, it's going to be a lot more than that. Five minutes behind Tutan, so he's going to be a long way down. And what of Manuel Navarro? He's done a great ride today, considering the expectations. 27th at the finish, so he's lost a bit of ground towards the end. So it looked promising, but now he's 2 minutes 48 behind Tutan. And Luis Sancho, a disaster day on the time trial bike. We know he doesn't like this discipline, but we didn't think it'd go quite like this. See if Sancho can save anything for the finish. 4 minutes, 45 seconds back. At least it was faster than Carlos Nello. But the big winner today is Hippolyte Tutin, who has won the stage. He's going to take the race lead as well in Kyoto. As we expected them to do, have really launched an assault on the leaderboard in the individual time trials. So not the most entertaining way to end up winning a bike race, but it is surely effective. Once again, the team in pink are in control. So let's look at the fastest riders from the stage 12 time trial today. Hippolyte Tutom, Kyoto is the winner, 21 seconds ahead of his teammate Yannick Rehova. Emma Meyer of Naltalia was third, the course a little bit too hilly for him to win today. Yevgeny Balashkov had a great performance in fourth place for Alphatari. Rico Rudiger fifth for Uskantel Uskadi. Chung Ling Shen sixth for Balnor. Jean-Marie Caillou 7th, also of Uskatel Uskadi, Giovanni Canale 8th for Doimo, Egon Kalas 9th, and Dagoberto Pasquale in 10th place. 1 minute, 49 seconds down on Hippolyte Tuta. Many of the climbers losing big, big time today, and they have some catching up to do in the mountain stages. So the gaps once again increased in the GC, and we'll look at the updated general classification Hippolyte Tutin is the new leader by 1 minute 2 seconds ahead of Chung Ling Shen. Jean-Marie Caillou is up to 3rd place at 1 minute 44 seconds. Lashkov is now 4th, then Rudiger 5th. Manuel Navarro down to 6th at 2 minutes 22 seconds. Ude Baya up to 7th place, then Egon Kalas, Eliana Pavlova, and Mario Matsyota. Matsyota 4 minutes down, I don't think he's going to be making up that on Hippolyte Tutin. So the number of riders who can win this race overall is fast dwindling. Meanwhile in the points classification, no meaningful change among the top riders, Walter still leads, and Udebaya still leads the mountains classification, but there is a change in the team classification, to the surprise of nobody, Kyoto has taken the lead in the team competition because they have so many riders up there in the time trial. Now Talia is now second and Alphatari is down to third. So another dominant performance by Kyoto in the time trial stages and Hippolyte Tutin is now the race leader. So the team will throw everything at the race to make sure they preserve that pink jersey. We have another flat stage tomorrow, but after that it's pretty much entirely mountain stages between here and the finish of the Giro. So the climbers will have their chance to depose Hippolyte Tutin and perhaps close the gap on Kyoto in the overall team standings. So Jiro is starting to enter its final act, and as always, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Welcome to stage 13 of the Giro d'Italia. The final flat stage, which in here in stage 17, we have three big mountain stages coming up next. Of course, we cannot ignore another opportunity for the sprinters. Indeed, a lot at stake in the points classification, because that competition has really tightened up in recent stages. The breakaways today were Lucas Venninger, Emma Meyer, Jonathan Kaiser, and Abdelkader Ngama. You can see them just in front of the peloton now. 
Alphatari still looking to find a stage win for Heinrich Kromer, and they need to hit back at Kyoto because Kyoto won the stage yesterday, once again extending their lead in the overall team standings, so Alphatari need to find an answer. Valnor will be looking for a second stage win for Super Shock Charatibat. Johnny Valters needs to hold off the rest of the race for that points jersey because he had such a big lead, but it's come down by so much in the recent sprint stages, and he needs to prove that he's still the most consistent sprinter. So Adrian Bernard on this false flat doing a big turn of pace, trying to mow down this breakaway. Sismic and Pichua Forestall trying to get set up. And that's the 10k to go banner, so the sprinters teams really need to get organized. And no sign of Castelli at the front of this peloton. So I'm not sure what their deal is because they were so dominant in their elite outs in the early sprint stages, but the team has seemingly disappeared from the front of the race. Bernard still hammering away, the breakaways have all been caught. Six kilometers to go now. Looks like some Valnor riders starting to get organized near the front. Same with Futura Forestall, so they have some numbers here. Bernard is still at the front of this peloton, such a powerful domestique. Now here comes the lead up by Valnor, 4Ks to go now, that's Samuel Udin. He has Sofian Jamuni in front. And there is Charatibak, third wheel, so he's in the hot seat in a great position. Kazim Banami's on his wheel along with Heinrich Kromer, and I think Blez Robillard is there. Udin first to go, and he turns it over to Jermuni. The final lead up comes from Sofian Jermuni. Charatibat in wonderful position, he tries to launch out of Jermuni's wheel, but a powerful sprint by Jermuni, and his teammate just barely gets around him on the line, so Charatibat will take the second stage win. Another fabulous lead up by Sofian Jermuni for second place, and Heinrich Kromer missing out once again down into third. And those sprinters all gaining on Johnny Vouchers, he only got sixth place today. The sprint train of Valnor, not very successful early in the Giro, but now they've got two stage wins. So things are really starting to turn around for them, and we'll see how close Super Shock Charatibat is to Johnny Vouchers in the updated points jersey competition. So in the meantime, here's the stage standings. The winner, Super Shock Charatibat, his teammate and lead out man, Sofian Jamuni, in second place. Heinrich Kromer is third, then Blez Robillard and Kasper Bosmans. The rest of the top 10 being Johnny Vouchers, Miroslav Kostra, Kazin Banabi, Ichikawa Kitetsu, and Robel Nagasi. No chains in the general classification, so they will head into the mountains as it stood this morning. And in the points competition, Johnny Vouchers still leads, but it's only by 7 points. Super Chalk Charatheva is up to second place now. Kostra is still lurking in contention. Heinrich Kromer is in fourth place. And no change in the mountains classification. Ude Bayo remains the leader for at least one more stage. Although she'll be put under a lot of pressure as we head into the really high mountains. And in the team classification, Kyoto still leading that. So the climbers will do battle tomorrow, the first real test for Hibali Tutan as the new race leader. And it's up to the other teams to do the attacking and take that jersey away from the big French rider. So see you next time for the Mountainous Stage 4. As always, thanks for watching.